I get to do something extra special this evening. I need I get to cut the Essilor Ideal Advanced Transitions Extra Active Gray Lenses with the Blue Flash Mirror for Yard Dog's own frame. Now Yard Dog is my Essilor rep. He actually sold me this equipment. Just got Essie Box from him last week. By the way, this is uh, Seymour Better with FreePrescriptionLenses.com. And he's been coming in showing me how to cut things, how to do things. He saw some of these uh, extra active lenses with the flash mirror and he's got to try them. So I'm going to make them for his own frames. These are the Light Tech, the 6924. This is a semi rimless frame. So in order to trace this frame, but actually in order to get going, I am going to assign a number to him. He is now Secret Agent 1588. Let me take my paper clip. My Essilor paper clip. I can't buy just one. They make me buy a box of a hundred. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to clip the, to this to his card so that years from now, should he ever need new lenses for this frame, I can pull up this number on my SE box. And uh, from the cloud, actually he can pull this up and have someone else make him lenses probably because he's got that back end Yoda stuff going on. Let me program the shape into the computer. Again, he is Secret Agent 1588. And in order, this is a semi-rimless frame, so in order to trace this frame, now I could just take a picture of this lens. I say I could because I ain't gonna. I'm gonna go old school, and I'm gonna put two dots, and I'm gonna have to do red dots for this video because I've already got black dots. These are his frames, so I, I, I know where the invisible bifocal is on here, where to place it, so I wanna put some red dots on I got this graph that gives me a straight line whoop, 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 whoop. we're having a party we're having a party so I'm gonna if you guys missed any of that let me recap <laughs> now see people have watched my videos that you know these he and the, his Essilor team has never seen my videos so I gotta pull out all my bad jokes and show them what I got going on so now again, this machine is capable to literally just take a picture of the lens. And I know he has the confidence in that he had to do it himself to, to make sure that it would work. But I'm still going to use an older style technology where I'm going to trace the shape of the right lens. I put those two red dots on there because I have this tool. And a yard dog can leave a comment what this tool is called. But it has a little line on the back, and that's why I put those two dots is lining everything up to make sure it is perfect. That's an optical term, by the way. I'm not sure exactly what it means, perfect. <laughs> so, place it in here, and I'm going to tell it to trace just the right lens. It's going to ask me for the bridge size, which is 18, so I'm going to hit check mark. The little stylus is going to pop up, and it's going to go around and trace the outside circumference of the lens. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com, where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine, uh, any authentic frame from me and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or unused health savings account flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase. Whether they're prescription or not, Yard Dog, you know you need some prescription. So... Let's move on to the next screen. I have to enter the pupillary distance. I don't think that really matters, does it? I don't know. Just to be safe, I'm going to put it in there. <laughs> it's, uh, the computer starts at 32.5. Now, he could show me how to change that, but it came that way. That's the factory preset default number. So I'm going to tap the plus button a few times. It goes up in half millimeter increments until I hit 34. I went and raised the optical center height, the height of the seg height, the invisible bifocal, to 19. Again, I tap this plus button, it goes up in half millimeter increments till we get to 19. Now I have to change the layout screen to a progressive. Now I've got uh, all invisible bifocals have uh, two little laser engravings on the outside. That is a circle. I put a dot in the middle of that circle. I also underline the strength of the bifocal. That tells me that it is the right lens when it is. I'm looking at the back of it. I place it on my Verilux, my Essilor Verilux layout chart. And it tells me where to put the height of the invisible bifocal right at that cross. So I'm going to come down here, place the lens onto the platform. Now this is a block. 
or as I like to call them, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I need two double-sided adhesive stickers of which I've got two right here. Place the sticker onto the first block, put it on the platform. We're going to do the same thing now for the second one. Place the sticker on there. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Now on the back is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice. The first time it's going to attach itself to another magnet there into the arm. And this is the platform the lens sits on. Can rotate one of the, the arms was blocking the view. So I'm going to rotate it until I can see all three dots. The blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. Yard dog's yard dog's eye is just above that in inset so i'm going to get everything laid out perfectly make sure the lens is large enough and it is and hit that button the arm's going to come down place the block onto the right lens we're going to do the same thing now for the left lens even though this isn't marked let me put an l on here now again if you guys missed any of that let me recap <laughs> Oh, remember to tip your waitresses and drive home safely. Remember, if you like me, tell your friends. If your friends like me, well, you better get new friends. Um, same pupillary distance, same optical center height, so nothing has to be changed. I'm actually going to make this one way off, but don't tell anybody, okay? Don't let him know. So again, line up the sticker, the magnet, place the dots where they are supposed to be, and... I'm going to hit that button. The arm's going to come down, place a block onto the left lens. Now, this is the edger. This is what's going to cut the lens while I run my mouth. It's going to do all the work while I just talk. The actual cutting wheel is this diamond crusted wheel on the left. Actually, hang on, let me back up. Let me show you a little more. Because whenever he comes over here, he always cleans things. He doesn't clean my door, he needs to. But uh, let me get some of this optical sawdust, the Schwarf, off of the equipment for the video. I should put this in his case. Well, he'd be surprised when he opens up and he sees that in there. <laughs> Alright, we'll throw it in the trash. But, the cutting wheel was down there on the bottom left. It's the diamond crusted wheel that is out of the way. And this, uh, this groove, this blade is what's going to put the groove into the lens. The groove is in the heart. <laughs> I couldn't dance with another. All right, you young kids will know what I'm talking about, but it'll cut the groove into the lens so it stays inside the groove of the string. So, and this is what's going to put the safety bevel on both the convex and concave surface of the lens. Let me go back to the screen. I can go ahead and place the block, press the, the chuck on the frame. Well, first I got to wake it up. This is secret agent 1588 1588 the barcode number these are polycarbonate lenses if they were plastic high index plastic or trivex lenses i would select that my favorite one is the tbd to be determined later some secret mysterious top secret <laughs> lens material that comes out in the future i'll be able to cut it but for now we're just going to stick with polycarbonate this is a grooved rimless if there was metal or plastic i could change that if it were flat, completely flat, I would pick that, but I ain't gonna. I'm not gonna polish the edge of the lens because it's not in polish now. I am gonna put a safety bevel on the front convex surface of the lens and a slightly heavier bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. And that concludes your vocabulary lesson of the day. You may turn the page now. Ding! <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna place the, now the magnet's gonna do its job a second time. It's gonna attach itself to another magnet there in the chuck or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I just don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. Of course, once it's paid for, it costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out, buy their own, put it on your kitchen counter. Then you can cut your own lenses at home, and you won't need this guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes. The only thing I would recommend is that you buy it from Yard Dog, like I did. Everyone who's watching this video, go out and buy one of these machines. Or... Tell him to give me the deal on Mr. Blue. He says he can get me one for $68,000. Come on, Yard Dog. Is that the best you can do? Is that the best you can do? So now I'm going to place the lens into the Chuck. Or as I like to call it, the Charles. Because I just don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. <laughs> Hit the green arrow with your start. The door closes. The clamp shuts. 
The lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, formerly known as white stylus. Now they're a little dingy white. But it's going around tracing the shape of the right lens, making sure it's large enough to fit, and then going around measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly precisely where to cut the groove into the lens for the best cosmetic look possible. Now the cutting wheel is beginning to spin and it's going to move to the center of the machine. The lens is going to drop down onto the cutting wheel. The light you see flickering in the background is water to catch the optical sawdust, also known as schwarf. May the schwarf be with you, except it won't because it's going to wash off because it will spray water onto the lens for the last 20 seconds just to wash away any optical debris that you may see beginning to form around the edge of your lenses right now. Now water will spray onto polycarbonate lenses cut dry meaning that no water sprays onto the lens during the cutting cycle or plastic high index plastic and tribex lenses cut wet meaning that water sprays onto the lens the whole time now these are polycarbonate lenses they are 40 percent thinner and lighter than regular plastic they're virtually unbreakable these are high impact ballistics grade lenses the same lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel and from flying debris it's also the same lens material that OSHA requires that factory workers wear in their safety glasses when they're on the factory floor. It also has 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin. Your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike the lotion creams and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun. Now, if you notice your lens is completely flat, just like a nickel, if I were to take it out now, it would stand up on the counter. Now it's doing its own check and balance system to know again where to place the cut the groove for the best cosmetic look possible. Now, you got the Transitions Extra Active Gray with the blue flash mirror. Transitions were the original blue blocking lens. You hear a lot of talk now about blocking harmful blue light from today's electronic devices such as cell phones, camera screen, uh, camera, computer screens, tablets, all that. So Transition Signature 7 lenses block about 30 to 40 percent. The Extra Active block 50 to 70 percent. Now you got the blue flash mirror which looks like Crizal Sapphire on steroids. It looks like that while it's indoors and it's going to look really cool while outdoors. Of course these are the Essilor brand. Essilor brand, Essilor brand of invisible bifocal called the Ideal Advanced. So now it is going to get the groove as a spinning blade that's going to go around. It's going to cut a six tenth of a wide groove and a six tenth of a millimeter deep groove into the lens so it'll be held in place by this string. Now I learned all of this now. Yard Dog is my sales rep, but he had Tony come and install it. And of course Clem in Richmond, Virginia services me now. I just got the SE box. I used to have to back up everything on a hard drive. On a, what kind of hard drive? An SLR thumb drive. And so Clem is going to have to help me transfer all the data. I'm going to have to put this in the machine download this now I've already transferred everything in here there's 588 jobs that I've transferred over to my SE box here and in fact I'm gonna do yard dogs while we're here but I need to call Clem and have him delete everything that's here transfer all of this data back on here then one at a time transfer it to SE box and record that he helped me do one for someone I had to ship to Chicago now I've got someone else in Anchorage, Alaska that needs new lenses for his frame. Clem, Clem, Clem! You gotta help me out with that. Once you do it that one time, we're good. I'll transfer everything to SE Box one at a time. Shoot it over there, barcode it, name everything. By the way, Yard Dog's gonna get a pink cleaning cloth. He already got one from me. This is for his wife to encourage her to come back and buy something really cool. I saw a picture of her on his phone. I don't know how Yard Dog got a beautiful woman like that to marry him. But we got to take care of her. I guess she likes charity cases. But um, we got to get something real nice, something original for her. These are the 06 Spatialism. Spatialism or Spatulism is a 1948 Italian art movement. 
most artists add to create spatialism you take away to create also known as term negative space I am told we got some really cool devices now this lady goes to church with me 83 year old lady wants me to make these as a pair of reading glasses for her and I'm gonna do it so but we got some other really cool colors it looks like a wood when it's down here and again it's a hexagonal shape that's hollowed out making them strong lightweight spring hinges we got to get some so this pink cleaning cloth is for your loving wife so she can come in and pick out something really cool really cool so now it's getting the safety bevel water spraying on the lens which tells me it's in the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle so when tony came down to install my equipment i was nervous as can be well for one yard dog had to be as patient as me i kept calling him up every few months how much is this how much is it do i really want to pull the trigger on one of these things the forty thousand dollars now normally these are thirty thousand but he said he would sell it to me for forty thousand so i got that going for me and of course this essie box which which was around two thousand then another twenty one hundred for the software so i don't have to go in every thousand this only holds a memory of a thousand so when it got to a thousand i had to download everything to this thumb drive not just store it here but i have a second thumb drive just in case one of another thumb drive failed and then also stored it on the hard drive of my laptop on the c drive so now i don't have to do that anymore this will store a million jobs or more heaven forbid a tornado earthquake fire something happens to this equipment and essilor replaces it for me under warranty under insurance but every job is saved to the cloud now and uh Sorry, someone was emailing me. I had to check that. Someone who got a pair of Ray-Bans today. But this is a little optical sawdust, also known as the Schwarf. I'm going to run my thumbnail around the edge of the lens to get all of that off. But because this is now cloud-based, once I get my equipment replaced, I can pull these shapes up. Of course, Yard Dog can probably go in and pull up this shape, have someone else cut lenses for him in the future. I see how it is. But he was really patient with me. I kept calling him, okay, how much is this? Oh, i got to check my finances. How much is this? Until finally he said, would you just hurry up and buy this damn thing? I believe he was a psychology major. He knew how to appeal to me. <laughs> so, And so I did. In fact, he, he said, buy this thing you must. He used that old Jedi mind trick on me. Because he's like Yoda. And, uh, okay, I will buy this from you. But now all of that schwarf is off the edge of the lens. I collect it very neatly into one pile and then I wipe it on the floor. <laughs> but I remember kids, I stayed in school for years to learn how to make a mess on my job. So kids, if you want to grow up and make a mess at work, you got to stay in school. So I know this is going to fit. So I'm going to go ahead and press this on there firmly, flip this over to L, put the, the lens back into the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky baby. The Chuck Master, or as I like to call it, the Yard Dog for tonight's purposes. Hit start. The door closes. The clamp shuts. Again, the lens is going to be traced by the two wide styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's going around tracing the left side of the lens. And just like before, it's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to cut the bevel into the lens. I don't need this anymore. So I'm going to hit start, pull the block off, use my hand approved drying method, use my calf move drying method, throw that back into the bin, put the sticker onto my sticker collection. So this was the first I did when I went out on my own since then, since I've partnered with uh, where I'm at now, my new lab. This is my new sticker collection. These are all the lenses I've cut since I have been at this location. And I use my Essilor brand of stickers for that. I am very Essilor loyal. So I'm going to take the lens. Now what everyone, people know there's a string at the bottom. There's also a string at the top. It's called a figure eight liner that lines in here. It's going to go inside this groove that is cut into the lens here. So you have to have the right tool for mounting that job. This tool is a little piece of, piece of plastic ribbon, something you would find a for like an Easter or Christmas. Very rarely is that specific tool a 25 cent piece of plastic. But I have it folded in half so I can grab the string. I start at the outside corner. I move it towards the nose, the nasal area of the lens. 
when you hear that snap it is in there now I need to place a string on the bottom of the lens to hold the strap the string down while I slide it I could use this finger I could use my ring finger or my pinky but I don't I use this finger and I don't know why I guess because I'm holding the frame like that I place my finger on the bottom of the lens pull the strap right out we're gonna come down here to my lensometer my Marco 101 lensometer turn the fine tune knob the axis wheel to 69 one tick mark away from 70 I'm gonna put it in over that black dot read the power and I am getting where's my flash I had a flashlight around here earlier where's my flashlight flashlight fla oh, here it is I've got a smaller one I just can't find it so I'm reading plus 50 exactly halfway between 0 and 1 that's because yard dog is nearsighted so he needs uh, I'm sorry he's farsighted so he needs two steps of magnification to be able to see better up close and far away now once we have the two steps of magnification he needs three steps of astigmatism correction now there is a stigma over the word astigmatism it just means shape it's like saying someone else has a straight hair or curly hair you don't freak out when you hear that but everyone freaks out over the word astigmatism it just means a second curvature on the lens so you have a plus 50 which is two steps you're on the second rung of the ladder and then you need another three steps of astigmatism correction and it's how we look turn those two curves everything nice and crisp and we're going to turn that to the 69th meridian so let's check that second curve and we're getting minus a quarter into the red how did we do that if you had 50 cents and you owed someone 75 cents you would be 25 cents in the red that's where we're at going away from zero towards the minus one now the left eye same magnification same astigmatism correction but we're going to do it the dyslexic at the 96th meridian that's pretty cool that doesn't happen very often a straight line is zero to 90 to 180 the right lens we're going to turn that fine tune knob to 69 we're going to turn it for the left eye to about 96. Now, the Essilor Ideal Advance is a digital freeform progressive lens. The bifocal strength is 250. It means the add, it means in addition to what's on top. So if you were to buy reading glasses, you would add the 250 to the 50 and you get about a 3. Now, that's fine for reading text messages or a menu, but it doesn't, over the counter reading glasses don't correct for the astigmatism. And that's why if he's going to read for 10, 20 minutes or more, you're going to get eye fatigue because you just don't clear things up like sixes and eights or the letters p and f now the computer distance is about just over halfway of the reading full reading power which would be a three so you need about a two two and a quarter to see at this distance now the Essilor ideal advance for your own frames now this is a pof which means patient's own frame it could very well be a pos but Morel actually, which is, makes the light tech frames, is a great company. So it is not a POS. This is quality frame. One day I'm going to offer these on my website. One day. But little by little, I add frames to my collection and I'll get this on there eventually. But this frame, this lens in your own frame sells for $179.99. But I'm actually going to charge him about $250. The Transitions Extra Active adds $99.99 for anyone watching, but again, I'm probably going to charge them $200 for that. And then the Mirror Coating adds $69.99 for a total of anyone else watching this, I would charge $349.97. I'm so if I could sell 2,000 of these, that would come to $68,000. I could buy a new Mr. Blue that could do some amazing, amazing stuff. But uh, I'll have to save that for the next job, my, my next machine I buy from Yard Dog. But uh, don't tell him that normally anyone else who buys these will pay $349.97. I'm going to charge him twice that so I can recoup some of my $40,000 that he got. But when Tony came to install these, I was terrified. I didn't know how. I've never bought something this expensive in my life that, that I couldn't sleep inside of at night. Like my house. All right, so I'm going to take this block off. You pull the sticker away. Use the back of my hand drying method. Throw that back into the bin. Take my sticker. Add it to my sticker collection. Now, this has, still has a rough edge, so I'm going to come down here. Put a little bit more of a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. Go ahead and run my thumbnail around to go ahead and take the optical sawdust off the edge of the lens. 
run my thumbnail into the groove to remove all of that. I've actually got a toothbrush here that will do it better. Don't worry, yard dog, I've never put this toothbrush in my mouth. I will not say why I have put it, but it hasn't been in my mouth. <laughs> oh, sometimes I crack myself up. You know, when the clown gets to laugh at work, it's a good day at work. So I'm gonna take out his original lens, throw that back in the bin. In fact, take this. He's gonna get all his original lenses back. Tuck the lens in at the outside corner, grab the string, the strap by both sides, start at the outside corner, move my way towards the nasal area of the lens. And when you hear the snap, it is in there. Put my favorite finger on the bottom of the lens so I can pull the strap out. Come down here, we're gonna place the dot in my lensometer to the 96th meridian on the axis wheel place the lens in there when I read the power I'm getting plus 50 exactly halfway between 0 and 1 in the black check the second curvature of the lens the astigmatic correction we end up at minus a quarter one tick mark in the red going away from 0 so the pupillary distance for whoops for the right and left eyes is 34 for the right eye 34 for the left for a total of 68 I'm gonna turn the card around place the PD stick against my thumb and when we hold it up to the left lens, we're getting 68 millimeters. So that is cut perfectly. The optical center height is 19. I'm gonna measure, place the PD stick against my thumb in the vertical meridian. Now when you look at the bottom of the lens, we're getting 19 millimeters. 19 millimeters. I'm telling you, this guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes who buys Essilor equipment from Yard Dog has Tony come and install it and has Clem service it when I got issues. That guy must know what he's really doing. Of course, I couldn't do it with such nice equipment. Essilor makes me look good. So this is the portion in every video that I, I tell everyone that every purchase is tax-free because I'm in North Carolina. Most people who do internet commerce now have to charge tax on things. I do not because I'm in North Carolina. So these lenses that would normally be $349.97, North Carolina's 8% sales tax, you would pay $27.99 in tax for anyone who buys these anywhere else on the internet, but these are tax-free in North Carolina and include free shipping anywhere in the U.S. and its territories. But I'm going to clean the lenses off. Now, normally I would make sure these are in standard alignment, but these are his frames. They could have been pre-adjusted for him, so I'm not going to adjust them. But these are what your lenses look like the first time before they have been activated. I'm going to go ahead and expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light. Now, as you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transition lenses to darken. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside. 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15 to return back to virtually clear. Now, this is important, Yard Dog, and everyone else who's watching. All transition lenses will get dark on day one and continue to darken every day for the first couple weeks they're exposed to the sun. The only time the Transition Signature 7 lenses won't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays that would cause your dashboard to crack from sitting in the sun all day. That's what prevents Transition Signature 7 lenses from turning dark. Now these are the extra active lenses, so they will get 30 to 50% dark behind a windshield. Now, the other thing about temperature sensitive lenses, like such as transitions, they will get darker when it's 85 and below than they will when it's 95 and above. But I remind everyone when it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable, they're miserable. Nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees outside. Having said that, these transitions, extra active lenses will get darker in hotter weather than the transition signature seven. They're designed for extra active people who spend extra amounts of time outside, hence the name extra active. So this is what they look like the first time they have been activated. Now, when you look through them, they're going to be a very dark gray. When people look at you, they're going to have that blue flash mirror. And again, I should have showed inside. I've got the, the Essilor Crizal Sapphire coating on my lenses. It's a mild blue. These have a stronger type of blue inside. It looks like a really cool anti-glare treatment. But... So as I keep talking, they're gonna get lighter and lighter. These are the blue. Now this mirror coating comes in six colors, silver, gold, green, blue, red, and pink. I've done them all except for pink. Somebody please buy pink. I wanna see what that looks like. So that is it. If you've liked what you've seen, Clem, Tony, and Yard Dog, please subscribe to my 
YouTube channel, which is, and has the same as my Instagram and Facebook page, which is freeprescriptionlenses.com. On Twitter, you can follow me on free RX lenses. If you have any questions about what I can or can't do or who to buy one of these Essilor brand of uh, equipment from, you can uh, email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or simply click the contact me button on the website. You can also leave a question or comment in the comment section below. And uh, anyone who loves Essilor and wants to get some of this equipment, I'll have Yard Dog give you a call. He'll make it happen for you like he did for me. Now these are going to continue to lighten as I keep running my mouth, which is all I seem to do in this video. But that's okay. That's what I do along with cutting lenses. That's what I do best. So again, thanks for watching. Yard Dog, thanks for having the patience to set me up with this. Talking me through getting Essie Box. Now Clem's going to do the rest for me on the phone. But Clem, hey, he's my man. I joke, he's the only guy who can make a living in his pajamas. I only talk to him on the phone. He talks me down off the ledge. He gets everything working the way it should be. So Clem, in your pajamas, call me so I can transfer all the data. The first 1,000 jobs that I did back onto here. Now when Tony set me up, I was sweating bullets. Now I'm on job 1588 for Yard Dog. It's not as scary as it was when I first went into business for myself. Thank you for all my Essilor team. These guys are the best. They make the best lenses. They have the best people helping out their team. From Yard Dog who sold me this, to Tony who installs it, to Clem who updates the software. And uh, I cannot recommend Essilor strongly enough. They make the best lenses. Their labs have the best customer service. I can get Shamir and Hoya products for anyone who needs it. I can do that. Email me. I'll make it happen. But my go-to default lens is Essilor. So, thanks again for watching. And now hopefully everyone else has seen how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.